Hi people, hope you're all well. I just want to say a few words on this, um, uh, let's say, situation in Stockholm um, involving a uh, Quran desecration. Uh, well, it was burned apparently. I, I didn't see the stunt itself, but um, it doesn't take much to picture the sort of, uh, the sort of scenario in which that would um, trigger a lot of Muslims. Um, so apparently this was carried out by um, a guy by the name of, let me just get this right and looking at the Times report, Dawan Mamika, and he fled from Iraq 20 years ago. I don't know much about his background, if he if he was a former Muslim, if he was a Christian, I, I don't know what his background is. But anyway, he, he went to Sweden 20 years ago. Um, so... 200 people turned up at this. It was obviously intended to incite um, provocation. I don't think there's any doubt about that because he wouldn't have filmed it otherwise. You know, it's, we're not talking here about some accident. Um, this was a deliberate act. Um, let me just say from the outset, I, I think it's foolish. I think it's wrong. Um, I've never believed that burning a book in that way, especially a sacred book, that's... Um, you know, the corner piece of a religion of over a billion people. I, I just don't think that's a smart move. Um, now, people may say, because there's been similar incidents of Quran burnings in the United States and elsewhere, that the purpose of it is to show how violent Islam is by, by doing this thing in order to, you know, provoke extremists to then engage in violence. Um, but, you know, if that's the logic, the thing is, there's plenty of extremism within Islam to begin with to criticise without having to polarise ordinary Muslims. And the problem with this act, it doesn't, you know, it's not a, a jab in the eye to ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Boko Haram or even hardline Islam. It's that insult to every Muslim because it's a sacred book. So that puts secular Muslims in a difficult position. I'm talking about Muslim to... Um, condemn extremists. They don't want a theocracy and they condemn that mindset, but they're, they're practicing Muslims and they don't naturally want to see their holy book being desecrated. It's just an unnecessary act. Apparently he also put bacon in it and this was done near a mosque, so it's just unnecessary. Um, having said that, we do need to talk about the response because President Erdogan of Turkey, who seems to think he personally is the spokesman of the Islamic world, has, you know, lashed out and he's saying this is yet more evidence of why Sweden shouldn't join NATO. But he seems to think this is uh, an act by the Swedish state, by the entire kingdom of Sweden, because one idiot um, with 200 people uh, done this act that's supposed to represent 9 million people. Um, Another reason why it's reckless is it could put diplomatic staff in danger. Apparently the Swedish embassy in Baghdad was surrounded. Um, so, you know, because of this reckless act, he's putting lives in danger. It may be that, you know, the expression, don't poke a hornet's nest or don't poke a wasp's nest. That may be that, you know, the wasps will sting anyway. But why, why create an unnecessary situation like that? Um you know, where the wouldn't the Swedish embassy wouldn't have been surrounded had this not happened. Um but yeah, getting back to Erdogan in Turkey, you know, he's lashing out and demanding respect and uh, all the rest of it. Firstly the Swedish government's condemned this. They couldn't stop it. The reasoning they couldn't stop it is the Swedish court ruled that um offence to religion was covered under free speech. Now whether it should be or not is another matter. But that that's the reality. So the Swedish government didn't have the power to stop this. That's something Erdogan either needs to understand or he's willfully ignoring. Um, they've condemned it. They called it an Islamophobic act. Christians in Iraq have condemned it. A lot of people have condemned it. I do have a slight concern that this sort of thing can be taken out of proportion. Um, you know, being offensive does not compare to acts of violence. It just doesn't. Um, I'd make an analogy with you know, certain stand-up comedians, I think their their jokes are in very bad taste, and I think people have a right to be offended by it. I don't agree, by the way. Some say, oh, offence is a choice. Um, the premise of that is 
that you know there's absolutely no onus on those who are choosing to be provocative. Um, if you, I don't want to go off too far off on a tangent here, but if you, for example, had lost a loved one in some tragedy in a plane crash or a terrorist attack, and some comedians making light of that, it's absolutely absurd and unreasonable to say to that person, "Oh, you can choose to not be offended." Of course, you're going to be offended. Of course, you're going to be offended. Um, I do not like comedians using human tragedy as a punchline. I just think it's, I, I, to me, that you go too far, especially if it's something that's fresh in memory. Um, I just don't like that sort of humour. Um, I can appreciate edgy humour, but I'm using that as an example because I would say people have a right to condemn the comedian, to say this is trash, this is in bad taste. What they could not do is commit an act of violence against the comedian. Um, but comedians have to understand, you know, free speech doesn't mean that they cannot be criticised. This Quran burner has to understand that free speech doesn't mean that he can't be criticised. Same principle. Um, I think that there is no question there is a hypersensitivity within Islam. You get it on some level in every religion. I mean, if you were to go to India and, you know, mock a Hindu god or deliberately say, kill a cow in a Hindu holy city, for example, that would be provocative. Um, and there would be some extremists who would then result to violence. Um, Christianity, certain African denominations would get hypersensitive around some things regarding Christianity. I do think Islam stands out, though. I do think that Islamist extremism really is more widespread, internationalised, than its Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, Jewish counterparts. I think it is unique in that sense. Um, and I think what is quite galling about something like this is you have Erdogan and there's other Islamist leaders. Um, Imran Khan is having his own problems in Pakistan, so he's probably too busy right now. But, you know, before he, along with Erdogan, was calling for blasphemy legislation at UN level, at UN level, Mahathir Mohammed in Malaysia is another example, and there's many others. Um, as far as I concern the demagogues, is they stir up Western phobia. You know, they talk about Islamophobia, but they constantly stir up Western phobia. Um, so they'll take the actions of one idiot or some far right group and use that to represent the entire West. Um, it's wrong. It's just as wrong as, you know, if. If a Western leader was to vilify all Muslims, um, I mean, some of Trump's comments, for example, were inflammatory. But I do think, um, whilst I'm cautious about talking about clashes of civilizations, because I think society is more complex than that, I do think that it is undeniable that within Islam there is a hypersensitivity and, a, frankly, a proneness to violence. It's, it's absolutely undeniable. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands have died in West Africa. It's something that doesn't get that much attention in European media, but, you know, thousands of Nigerians have been slaughtered um, at the hands of Islamists. Uh, some of the main victims of Islamic extremism are to be found in Muslim countries. Wherever there is Islamic dogma, there is uh, violence and oppression of minorities. That is a reality, wherever it is found. Wherever, even in in more moderate Islamic countries such as Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, and Tunisia, even in those examples, you can find Islamist intolerance. So, what does that say about a country like Iran or Pakistan? The point is that there is endemic, deeply entrenched persecution of minorities in those countries. Um, that is far on a much, much different scale than anything Muslims go through in the West. I mean, let me cite another example. The Christchurch mosque attack, the terrorist attack on a mosque in New Zealand. It was awful. 50 people died. It was a major terrorist attack. It was worldwide condemnation. You know, New Zealand had a lot of soul searching, um, as did Australia. But the same month that happened, there was an Islamist atrocity at a church in Colombo, Sri Lanka, you know, far more killed, it got condemned, it got attention, but that is just one of an absolute ocean of atrocities carried out in the name of Islamic extremism in recent years. Frankly, too many to even remember. 
In Europe, we've had plenty of examples of this. So whilst I'm reluctant to talk about a clash of civilizations, I will say that Islamism, Islamist dogma, is absolutely incompatible with Western values. Incompatible. Because wherever there is Islamist dogma, you do not have egalitarianism. You don't have egalitarianism of LGBT people, of women, of Jews. Um, it is a threat. And whilst this incident was an act of willful provocation, there are many examples of honest mistakes or even situations where people aren't even trying to be blasphemous and they will, that's not enough. You know, so it is true, it doesn't take much to trigger Islamists. Um, I've cited a few times now uh, the incident Wakefield where the schoolboy had to basically go into hiding and his mother had to make a tearful apology to a local uh, meeting which involved imams and others. Um, and, you know, local Muslim councillors were demanding full re police responses and, you know, they were basically acting like a major crime had been committed because the Quran got scruffed. Um, so there is a mentality that is very entitled, very demanding and absolutely drenched in hypocrisy. Um, and I think the Western countries have caved into it far too much. Um, one of the Dutch politicians, I forget his name now, but he'd certainly be on the right wing side of things. Um, uh, I think it was Gert Wilders, actually. I'm not saying that I agree with all his positions, but he did make a fair point. After the Turkish presidential election, all those Turks in the Netherlands who vote for Erdogan, who want to live under an Islamist society, they should leave. I mean, why would you, if you're an Islamist, want to live in the decadent West? You know, a country like the Netherlands, where LGBT rights are very strong and where, you know, whatever people think of that, that's the reality. So why would an Islamist want to live in those countries? If not for trying to impose their values onto us. Um, so I think the appropriate response of, for example, the Swedish government, condemn the Quran burning, but that's it. Don't go beyond that. They should not be um, going out of the way to please, you know, a tyrant like Erdogan. Um, they should do everything they can to protect the consular staff. And if there is violence against Swedish citizens as a result of this, you know, not only Sweden, but the entire Western world has to vocally condemn it and say that there is no equivalency between being offensive and being violent. One is far worse than the other. I mean, there's just no comparison. How many people have been murdered in Pakistan over alleged blasphemy and in other Islamic countries? I mean, I could give a whole list of examples of intolerance that you can find in Islamic countries. Is it being Islamophobic? No, it's, it's an empirical reality. And my message to Muslims, all Muslims, is uh, I don't agree with this. Um, if I was a Muslim, I'd probably find that offensive. Um, I mean, Christians wouldn't appreciate the Bible being burned. It's wrong. It shouldn't happen. But I hope you would also agree that because one idiot has decided to desecrate one Quran, I mean, remember, there's millions and millions of copies of this book. It's not like it's the only one. Um, I hope you would agree that that is not an excuse for violence against Swedish citizens or against um, Swedish targets. It's just not. Um, I think that there is far, far too much pandering to Islamic sensitivity. When things like this occur, um, you know, we, we shouldn't encourage it. We should, I think Western governments obviously need to show that they're condemning it. Otherwise, Erdogan will just lie and say that the Swedish state is condoning it. So it, it is important that they condemn it for that reason. But I think there is a lot of distortion and hypocrisy going on from the Islamic world. And I don't think that we in the West should take any lectures from the Islamic world at all. None. Because whatever injustices might happen, I mean, I mentioned the Christchurch terrorist attack. There's been a few other examples of anti-Muslim attacks. Perhaps the worst in recent years, um, in fact, today is the anniversary of the Srebrenica massacre in Bosnia, 1995. So yes, there has been examples of anti-Muslim violence. Uh, in the case of the Balkans, so there's always been an Islamic population there. So the context is somewhat different. And that was in the midst of a brutal civil war and there was a lot of issues going on. But I think more Western Europe, um, 
if an individual Muslim is attacked, that's considered a hate crime and it's taken seriously and the culprits will be, you know, hunted down and arrested. Um, it does sometimes happen, unfortunately. And I will I, I'll always condemn that. You know, if a Muslim woman has her hijab ripped off, if an elderly imam is attacked, um, these things have happened. I condemn it unreservedly. But I don't think we should take a single lecture from the Islamic world. And frankly, we need to impose our values more. By our values, I mean a pluralistic society. I mean saying we do not have blasphemy laws here. And it is unacceptable that a mob will gather outside a school forcing a teacher into hiding. Unacceptable. I think also that when the whole immigration question is, is not something I could cover in one video, there are so many components of it. But I think absolutely one thing that needs to be considered in any sort of vetting, if any sort of structure gets in place that is, so much of it right now seems out of control. I mean, in terms of the system. But where vetting can be done, I think it is absolutely critical that we see what people's values are. If they, for example, feel that um, there should be blasphemy laws in the West, if they feel that the correct response to offending Islam is the death penalty, um, they should not be allowed into our countries. It's that simple. We should have no place for Islamists. And it's easier said than done. Just a second, Dad! It's easier said than done because um, there's a lot already here. So it's, this is not a simple situation. It's not something that can be easily um, resolved. So I think it's a question of being very assertive. Um, yes, we could get them an incident like this, but we should absolutely not pander to the narrative of Muslim victimhood. This does not represent Muslim victimhood in the West. It really doesn't. Let me know your thoughts.